so our goal today is to cover the steps you have to follow to properly reconcile an assessment before you take it, before you retake it. And you'll notice here on our timeline, the assessment was due by the start of class today on 8 September. And then the reconciliation has a tight window. A copy of this is going to be placed in the reconciliation assignment. The answer key that you're going to get is going to reflect the order of questions as they were created, not the order that you took them. Uh, the answer, the items on the assessment are randomly sorted for each individual in the class that takes them. So this first item, multiple answer 1 16th of hex 1F, a computer scientist, a computer science student attempts to increase the hexadecimal number 1F. So we're increasing, that means we're sliding to the right. We're going from 1F to 16 times the original. The exponent of 2 that is equivalent to 16, a factor of 16 is 2 to the fourth. So we're going to slide four places to the right. Um, no, I'm sorry, to the left. My mistake. Yeah. So increasing, I'm going to the left four times, right? Uh, one F is zero 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 one, and F is one 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 one. So I'm taking five ones and I'm sliding them four places to the left. So if I, if I take the binary equivalent of 1F, which is 0, 0, 0, 1, let's just, let's just do this quick. And uh, make this big. So I have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. I'm going to slide this four places to the left. I only have three zeros. So I have to, when I'm moving it this way, I've got to create another, another nibble, half of a bite over on this side, which means I'm going to end up with something that looks like this. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero, 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 zero because when I slide five of these that way, I'm putting, an, I'm putting it over here into the, I'm putting it right here into a new, I have to, I have to adjust my leading zeros, my, my leading zeros. I have to create trailing zeros because I'm sliding to the left and I have to keep my place. So that's the new binary value when I increase hexadecimal value one foxtrot by 16 times by sliding four places to the left. Any questions? Okay, so it's asking me, it says, the computer science student attempts to increase it by shifting bits to the right three times. And so the mistake it fails repeatedly. Please select all the statements below that are accurate. Okay, the shift has to be four places, not three places. The shift has to be to the left, not to the right. The four binary zeros must be present at the rightmost boundary after the shift has occurred. That's what, what I mean is this, the rightmost boundary. You have to create four new zeros when you do the shift, okay? Now, it could be that when you look at this, you got this one correct and you got this one correct, but you missed this one. So maybe you forgot to check this one or didn't know to check this. Oh, I'm sorry, this one. The one about the four binary zeros must be present at the rightmost boundary. It could be that the wording of that answer was a little different than what we've reviewed in class. And so many of you may have selected this one and selected this one, but did not include this one. Here's the point. When you look at it on your screen, when you review your assessment, 
this question isn't going to be question number one. It, it's going to be further down your page and it'll be in a different place than every other student in the class. The answer choices are not going to be like this either. The answer choices are going to be randomized. So the correct answers could be down here on your screen. So when you look at your screen to compare your answers, you're, you're going to want to account for the difference. Now you should also be able to view it on screen and it should also indicate when you view your answers, if you click into your result, it should show you correct answers and incorrect answers because I set the options to show both correct and incorrect choices that students make. So you may not have to reference the answer key at all. You may not have to reference the answer key at all to see where you made errors or mistakes. Does everyone understand how the answer key is going to differ from your view of the assessment once it's scored? But I, this is not an activity for, for you to try to justify why you made the mistake. Please, please, please understand. We don't want, we don't, we don't want you to have to do that. That makes this whole activity painful, needlessly so. The only thing I want you to do is to state the words of the question and then to state the words of the correct answer you should have chosen. Or state the words of the answer you should have admitted, omitted, right? So if you didn't, if you, if you chose something you weren't supposed to, you'd say, well, I selected this answer and I was, I was supposed to, I was supposed to omit this answer, right? Because it's incorrect. That's all you're doing. And why are we doing that? If you, if you type it out, if you type it out, you'll remember it when you retake it. Now this has to do with memory and deep processing and the way the human brain and human memory works. It's very important to understand. If you do copy and paste, this won't work. You will not gain the benefit of reconciling incorrect assessments. Notice this caveat, important. It is strongly recommended you avoid using the copy and paste. Type out the words manually. When you type out the words of the question and the words you were supposed to have correct, because you're typing it, your muscles and your eyes and your reading will fix the correct information into your memory. Trust me on this, please. It has to do with your touch. Anytime you connect a detail you have to remember with your five senses or with an emotion, it sticks. That's how human memory works. I have a quick story to tell you about starfish. We're gonna digress here just for a moment, okay? And we're going to do this because I have a point to make about how the human memory works. And I want you to understand how memory really works. At the end of the course, not the end of the class, at the end of the course in December, right before Christmas, I'm going to ask you something about the starfish. And I bet in this short session right here and right now, I'm going to share with you how your memory works better and why reconciling is worth doing right here and right now. Did you know that when you pick up a starfish and you hold it in your hand and you pat it on the top of the head, I used to do this with my sisters and I'd say, isn't this starfish cute? Why don't you pat him on his head? And I'd hold the starfish just like you're seeing him now flat in my hand, my open hand. And my sisters would walk up and they'd pat the starfish on the top. And right away they'd get something slick and smelly on their hands. And then I'd say, Oh, you just, touched, you just touched his anus. The starfish body plan is reversed from ours. Their, their anal orifice, their, their butthole, for lack of a better term, is uh, sitting on the top in the center of that, that body plan, right on the top. So when you pat him on the top of what you think is his head, it's not. It's his anus. And, and they would get this smelly, slick stuff on their hands. And what they were getting on their hands was starfish poop. 
Now, I want you to remember, I want you to imagine in your mind's eye what that experience was like, me giggling, they're being revolted. I want you to imagine the smell of poop. I want you to feel the slick in the hands. And I want you to remember that for the rest of your life the next time you pick up a starfish. The other interesting thing about starfish is that uh, they love to eat conchs and uh, clams and oysters. And they don't eat like their mouth is on the underside about where you would expect their anus to be. And they open up their mouth and they vomit their intestines in their stomach and turn them inside out and dump their innards all over the top of the shellfish. And the acid and the protein enzymes digest the organism they're eating while they're alive. So I want you to imagine the screams of a conch while it's writhing around, squiggling and worming a baby conch, trying to get away from a starfish, and it's being eaten alive by the starfish. It's being digested by the stomach acid and protein enzymes while it's alive trying to crawl off, and the starfish is latched on, on top of it, right? Now, the point I'm trying to make is I just associated the important facts about a starfish, its anatomy and its life habits with powerful emotions, with feelings, with sensations. If you take information and you associate it with one of your senses like touch and sight and smell and sound, the memory becomes that much more indelible. You don't forget it as easily. The goal for our reconciliation is to give you an opportunity to take the information you need in your, uh, let's see, on this item. So we're gonna, we're gonna create a reconciliation. We're gonna pretend that we made this mistake and we did not select this, this item, right? I wanna show you how this works. If you, if you drag your mouse over this and you copy and paste, you've blown it. You need to type out the words of the question, okay? Because when you get to the point where you're talking about, okay, it's an increase, okay, it's 16 times. As you type those things out, your fingers, it's called tactile kinesthetic, your touch, it's a sense, you're gonna remember those things. And then when you say the answer I should have selected and you type it out, four binary zeros must be present at the rightmost boundary. You'll remember what rightmost boundary means. And you'll remember that, okay, it was four because 16 is a factor of four, right? So, so the point is when you're doing your reconciliation, you want to type out the words of the question and, and the words of the answers you should have selected. This is an unacceptable reconciliation item. If you said item four, should have put B, should have put A, should have put C. That's worthless. It is literally worthless. You will receive no credit for this. I'm going to bounce your submission back and say, you did not submit the reconciliation according to the criteria for the assignment, right? It's a simple thing. Here's the acceptable way to do it. Item four, multiple choice, and you don't even have to do item four, multiple choice. You can, you don't even have to say the question reads, but you type out, what is the binary equivalent of the hexadecimal number AA? The correct answer is 1010, 1010. That's what you're doing when you reconcile. Okay, my grades. All right, so if you look at 1.5, right? Okay, okay, here's, here's where we go. So you'll notice, and this is, I wish they were a little plainer about this. If you go to the calculated details, you'll notice your score is sitting there. And if you put your mouse pointer over it, it'll highlight and then click it. You're clicking, you go into your grades. Yeah. And when you go into your grades and you click on the assessment, this comes up. Yeah. It shows, it shows the uh, attempts. And then when you click on the 
the score to the right, the lower right corner. When, when the deadline has passed, you can view the answers that you put on there. The setting for the assessment should also- Yeah, got it. Yeah, the setting for the assessment should also show where you picked an incorrect answer. So it should show the selected answers and it should show the correct answers. And like for question one, you see that Deanna said, okay, that answer is false when the circuit is open. This means the Boolean value is actually on or the equivalent of the number one, that's, that's false. The Boolean value is actually off when it's open and the equivalent to the number zero in base two would be correct, right? So she chose correctly. So she doesn't have to reconcile that. She's not worried about that. She's only worried about the ones where there was an error that was made, right? And in some cases, when there's multiple answer, that's when it gets tricky. So you can use, and notice her first question is not the same first question as my answer key. The answer key that I provide to you, in case you need to reference it, uh, is my copy of the assessment with all of the correct answers in the order everything was created. And so in most cases, you don't need the answer key to reconcile. If you just scroll down, you look for a red X and then you write, you write out, you type out the words of the question and the words of the answer. And that's all you have to worry about. Item analysis. I take your module assessments and then I run an item analysis on your module assessment. And that only takes a moment. And then I, I look at it and I sort by the average score on an item. Now most items are a half a credit, right? Or they're a half a point. So uh, these are the ones that everybody got correct. If the average score was 0.5 and uh, everybody got this, right? So what I do on the retake is I focus on the ones where people didn't do as well. So what am I saying? This is about mastery learning. I would not spend a lot of time on the retake repeating questions everyone got correct. So these first two questions, the value of a mile raised to the zero power or anything raised to the zero power, there's not gonna be a question about that on the retake, the alternate version. There's not gonna be a question about this, uh, this item because it was worth a half a point. The average score was a half a point. Everybody got it correct. But the further down the list I go, the more questions I'm gonna have about those items on the retake because that's where everybody was weakest. Does that make sense? Yes. 